Hey everyone, it's Zach. So today I want to cover how to search using Realtrax MLS system. So I know in a previous video I covered that there's 12 different MLS systems across Tennessee. Well, we are hooking our agents up in secondary markets that are not in Middle Tennessee with Realtrax. And so I want to show you today how to use this system and how easy it is to actually search for properties. So I'm logged in here to my dashboard. They have different widgets that you can set up, different recent market activity that you can customize. But I really wanted today in a real quick video show you the search capabilities of Realtrax. So for example, your most used tabs are gonna be up here. So you have search, my listings, showings, people, reports, admin, help. Now before I jump into the search, check out reports. This is super helpful reports and market stats. Because in market stats, you can search for what's the average price per square foot, what's the average sales price, how many days on the market, all that through reports, market stats. And you can narrow it in for those specific stats on different cities, different counties, different regions. So use that reports tab a lot. People tab. So if you ever need to search for an agent, you can go people and then member search. You can look up anybody that's associated with Realtrax MLS. Basically any agent that's in the system, you can look them up. You could even look them up by office. You can look them up by company. So we go here, here we are. And then here's Zach Taylor Real Estate. And then if you need to click on an agent, for example, like Lipe, here's Lipe's phone number, license number, it's all right here. So if we go back, now we're back to the home screen. Now let's actually start looking at listings. So if we go to search, we can do listing search. So I like that one. And now you'll see it pops up a map. It shows where we're located. It has a detailed uh, boxes that you can fill in as far as I wanna search for a certain number of bedrooms, bathrooms, square footage. Also right here, I wanna show you this tab right here, this little near me. Super cool feature, works tremendously well on the app for your phone. So if you're on the app on your phone and you're driving around and your client is like, hey, what's that price listed or what's that property listed for? Click this little near me button. Now it zooms in and it actually shows you green means it's active. So you could pop up, oh, that listing over there is 1211 uh, Green Hill Street, 445,000. So near me is a super cool feature when you're driving, when you're out and about, or if you're just at the office and you just wanna see, you know, what's around me right now. And you can look all the different listings available for sale. Now, how do we customize this? Let's go back to that. So we go over here to search, we'll hit search, and then we can select by class. So we can do residential, land, rentals, multifamily, commercial. So those are different classes of property that you can search by. There's a subtype. So residential is ginormous with condos, townhomes. So we can organize, you know what? We want site built homes. We want manufactured homes. We want HPR, which is more like downtown Nashville, condos. So you can organize this. Let me just say, let me just leave this blank. And then listing status. So this will help you out a lot. You have active, coming soon, under contract, showing, under contract, not showing, expired, canceled, closed. Now, with some of these options, for example, if you see a listing that is active, and I like to tell all my clients that I'm working with as buyers, if you see a property that's active, an agent by rule has up to 48 hours to change the status to pending or under contract if they've already accepted a contract. So just because something is right now, this is active, they might have already accepted something and maybe tomorrow they change it. So it's always good to call that listing agent and just make sure it's not under contract. Um, under contract showing versus not showing, you will see a significant drop off if you have an active listing and you change it to under contract, even showing. Your showings will drop off significantly. Uh, expired, canceled, and then closed. So closed is really good for if you're starting to run a CMA or your clients want to know, hey, what's been selling in this area? What's the average sales price? So you can go back three months or six months. So if I go close and then I hit search down here, now the red is everything that's closed. So red. And then you can click on a listing. Once it loads, click on it. So we can see it, it sold 305, 900, four bed. Here's all the details. It closed November 10th, 2022. You can scroll down here and sometimes agents put in the seller paid closing costs if there are any contract to close days 36 under contract date so this is the listing itself let's go back and now if we go back to search so that's listing status so what i like to do with this 
uh, search fields over here is I actually like to customize this. So every time I log into Realtrax, it's exactly what I'm normally looking for. So what I mean by this is let me get rid of close. And then there's always a tab down here that's usually marked as blue down here and it says include auctions. Usually I'm not really helping people look for auction properties, so I uncheck that. And maybe I could say, you know what? I always am looking for clients uh, for homes over 300,000. So I could type that in here. And then what I could do is hit save up here. So hit save, save uh, as new search. And then you can save this as a default search option. So every time you log into Realtrax and pop up the search feature, it automatically inputs everything that you want it to show automatically by default. You can still change it later, but that's a really nice, easy feature to make sure your search is exactly what you want. Let me go back over here, for example. Uh, we have list price, beds, uh, baths, and these are minimum and maximum is what this says over here. So you could put beds minimum, I need three, is what I'm searching for. And I keep hitting enter, so it keeps getting rid of this, but that's three. You can scroll down here. You can search by only show listings with an open house. That's pretty cool. There's also a really cool add search criteria box down here. So this is kind of the main things that people search for. Beds, baths, square footage, acreage. However, there's so many more options to search for. So you can type that down here. Hey, you know what? I want to look for um, office listings, for example. So if you type in list, there's a tab down here that says list office. So I could add this and then search for, hey, what are other listings that our company has? And maybe I reach out to those agents and ask to host an open house for them. So that's an option. There's also like list price per square foot. There's foreclosure. Let me get rid of this. So there's all sorts of additional search criteria that you can add. Let me minus out of this. Now, searching in general. There's a couple different ways to do this. Let's say, for example, we need to run a CMA report. We need to find comps for a property. So let's say uh, what we can do is we can actually, we can start with center. I really like this feature. So hit center and type an address. I'm going to make up something. We're going to see if it exists. We're going to go one, two, three. Uh, let's go Main Street and see if that exists. Okay, so there is some sort of Main Street. Um... Let's just go, let's just say the home is downtown Nashville, for example. Let's go here. It's a condo. Let's do that. Condo, downtown Nashville. So normally when you have your address of, hey, a homeowner calls you, they want to list a property, you can put that address under center and it'll zoom in on a specific area. So we'll say, we'll say it zoomed in right here on this one. So what you can then do, the next step, now that you've centered your map, is hit draw. And what I really like to do is you can do either a circle as a, like a shorthand, you can draw a circle real quick and just search in here, search listings. Or if you wanna get more specific and just hone in on a certain neighborhood, you can click on this, draw, draw first, click on this, hit delete, and now hit this polygon shape. So if I hit polygon, now I can make it a specific area if I need to. Like I just want this section right here search. So now you have it honed into a specific area. You can also hit draw, tap it once, it brings up the size so you can make it bigger. If you need to, you can move it around. You can make it bigger. You can tap two times and it'll bring up these little dots on here so you can actually extend specific sections. Like I want this, I want this in a little bit. So you can customize the shape. It makes it really helpful for searching for comps or other properties. Search, and now let's go, let's actually get rid of this, for example. Exit, okay. Zoom out, search this area. Now, you can have this view where you have your map on one side and you have your thumbnails over here. If you want a list view, you can hit list up here. And so now it just turns it into listed items. You can also change it to grid view. And so you kind of get a little mixture. You get your thumbnail, you get the property, and a little bit more of a description. So this is grid view. Now if I go back to list, for example, actually let me go map, because this will be easier to explain in this map. So all of these properties, if you're curious about a particular property, just click on it. And it will open up the listing. 
So you have what it's listed for, price per square foot, the address, beds, baths, square footage. You also have really cool right here, annual taxes, and you see this record is blue. So if you click that, it's gonna take you to a new site that Realtrax has partnered with called CRS Tax Data. So this is now bringing up public records. So now you can see, well, who owns this? Nash Rentals LLC. Here's their mailing address, here's the property address. So you know, okay, this person doesn't live at this address. You can also view previous sales history to see what they paid for the property. You can also pull up mortgage history. So you can see, does somebody owe on this property? And you can even hit view mortgage details and see this was a commercial loan. So it's really cool. You can view taxes right here. So city taxes, county taxes, total taxes last year, or in 2021, they paid a little over $2,000. It also has FEMA flood zone codes down here. It has the acreage size. And uh, it does have school zone information. So all of this is really helpful. My only disclaimer would be verify all of this. Have your client verify all of this. So this is not always 100% accurate. For example, you almost always see the square footage is off. Uh, school zones could be off. So don't for sure tell somebody, hey, this is for sure 100% in this school zone. Always have them verify. But let's go back, for example. All right, so we're back here. You have public remarks. So this is what everybody sees on Zillow, Realtor.com, all those consumer sites, public remarks. That's what they see. Private remarks is just realtor to realtor. So only agents can see these messages between each other. Sometimes people put, uh, hey, the wash and dryer are not included, the fridge is not included, and the above ground pool in the back, the sellers are gonna take that. Like they'll put that in private remarks. Uh, or they'll say that, uh, they'll put showing information, or they'll put just other stuff. Private remarks is super, super helpful communication, realtor to realtor. You have your acreage right here, you have the lot size, so you have different information, you have the school zones, and then you have the listing agent's info. So that's right here. Now, definitely make sure, if you're gonna call a listing agent, for example, you can even click on Tom, for example, call the mobile number. I get a lot of calls every single day that people are just calling the office number looking for Tom, for example, and instead they should just be calling his mobile number. That's the best way to get a hold of listing agents. You can also see over here, buyer, buyer broker commission. So they're offering 3% if you bring a buyer to their property as an agent. Uh, possession, they're negotiable as far as when a buyer can close and move in. Original list price and then history. This is almost like a cheat code for real estate agents. History down here. So let me go, let me pull up another property to see if I can't find something. So you can see here, for example, this was listed here, active. Price, they had a price drop of minus $20,000. It was $545, now it's $525. But you can see different histories and pull it up. So you can see the last time it closed. You can see if a property is being withdrawn and then relisted right away. That way they get fresh days on the market. You can see if something was pending, uh, like under contract, for example. And then if it shows back active and maybe it was only five days pending, Maybe in the back of your brain, you're like, I wonder if that's an inspection issue because that was so quick. Or you see it was pending for like 30 days. Maybe the buyer had, and then back active, the buyer could have had financing issues. Maybe the home didn't appraise. So those are different timelines, kind of your cheat code down here of viewing what's been going on with this property since they've been trying to sell. You also have different documents down here. So really good listing agents, uh, just like this person, they put the property disclosure. They put the confirmation of agency. They even put a floor plan. Some people put offer instructions down here. They put a lot of the documents that you need if you're gonna submit an offer. That way they're not getting called by all these agents saying, hey, can I get the property disclosure so I can write an offer? Can I get the property disclosure? They just upload it, so it's right there. So that's really helpful. Let's go back. Um, and then I wanna show you different color codes for properties as well. Let me go under contract showing and then closed. So let's do all of these in this area. Search. So the different colors that have popped up. Green means it's active, it's for sale. Gray, I'm trying to see if there's a gray. Gray right here is coming soon. If you see a yellow, that means it's under contract. Specifically, under contract, they're still showing. Go back to results. And orange means under contract, not showing. 
So you can see that here, status under contract not showing. So basically almost like a stoplight. Green means go, it's active. Yellow, orange means it's pending. And then red means it's closed. Let's go back. All right, super cool thing too. With this listings, this will be the last thing I cover on how to use the Realtracks MLS system. Let's say, for example, we want to start creating a CMA report. Well, a CMA, if we go through here, you can see we have all our actives up here. It changes to under contracts. And then if it loads, it goes down to solds. So there's a little box right here with a grayed out checkbox. So what you can do, if you want to start narrowing in on, let's say this property, and I'm totally going to, this can be completely wrong picking properties, but I'm just doing this for an example. So let's say this is our target house and we're trying to find similar properties. Well, what you could do is when you're searching on this list, let's hone it in a little bit. Let's go just here, search. And then let's say, you know what? Uh, this house could be similar. And again, this is wrong, but I'm just clicking to make this faster. So click this, click this, click this. All right, so now I've checked off several properties. Now what you can do is hit this little filter up here. So hit the filter button and then hit view selected. So now instead of having all those results, it's narrowed it to just what I've clicked. What you can also do is hit more and then CMA. Now it's done a CMA of just the properties that I've checked off. That's it. That way I don't have 50 listings with all these listings that don't apply. I've narrowed in on these ones might work best. So you can see acreage averaged out, beds averaged out fast, year built, square footage, list price per square foot, list price, days on market. These are active, under contract is here, and then closed is down here. So you can see list price per square foot, list price, sold price per square foot, and uh, sales price, and then when it closed. And then you can see even here, an average of 63 days on the market between those two homes. So that's a really helpful feature of how to start getting your comps using the MLS. Let's go back. You could also go to list view. And if I go view all results, kind of same process over here, you can see what I've checked. Over here, this is blue. So you could check, you know what, I need to add this one, this one, and this one. And then you can come up here and hit more, CMA. So now it's got my CMA of the properties that I've checked off. So that's how a basic framework of how you use the Realtracks MLS system, how you can search through it, how you can create comps, how you can use the near me feature when you're driving around and using the mobile app. So this, that's a lot of helpful stuff to help you out. So that way you can navigate Realtracks MLS system. If you have any questions at all, comment down below or schedule time to speak with me. Look forward to seeing you guys next time.